What do you feel are the key differences between open source software and open hardware? Well, you know, I think when we started the Open Compute Project, we were really intrigued by the overall benefits that the software community had by applying open source principles. And we just thought, like, how much faster could innovation go forward if we actually applied those principles to the hardware space? Right. right? Because if you look at it, it was night and day differences in the pace of innovation. The amount of community work that was done in hardware is almost non-existent. Um, but, and we launched the Open Compute Project just a little bit more than a year ago, and we've seen tremendous strides there. But it is an entrenched industry, and to answer the question specifically, the big difference is that hardware costs a lot of money to develop, right? There's right. people that have to spend a lot of capital to build factories, and it's also a traditionally very closed development environment, right? Like, when you start working on a project, you sign an NDA, you can't really even talk to your wife and kids about what you're working on. Um, and that has a certain pace of innovation associated with it that I would claim is a lot slower than the pace of innovation when you do development out in the open. So I would say that's really the biggest difference is mm -hmm. developing hardware out in the open. We've already started to see some of the benefits of that. Um, for example, we had our friends from Tencent and Baidu come and visit one of our data centers and we started talking about some of the challenges we had with the physical infrastructure. And they said, well, we're having very similar challenges around the rack enclosures that we deploy. And so they had already started a project that was separate from the Open Rack project, which is one of the six projects we have in Open Compute. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, what if we just converged these projects and we all started working on it together? And it's just moving forward so That's much faster shift, that way. Right? Yeah. That's a big shift, right? That's a big shift. Where are we on the Open Hardware timeline? I mean, are these just the very early days right now? I would say it's the very early days. Um, we're just about a year in, right? Open Compute was kind of our way to give the industry a little bit of a nudge, mm -hmm. um, and the nudge is working. Um, I definitely think that it's going to take some time, so I would say we're at the very beginning of the journey. Um, you know, the railroad analogy that I used earlier today in the keynote, it took about 30 years for people to all agree on a common gauge for the for the railroad tracks. Um, it won't take us 30 years, hopefully. Um, right. You know, you look at how quickly Linux went from uh, something that, you know, people would comment on, oh, well, it was written by children with crayons, you should never deploy that in a large-scale production, to it, you know, really Linux now being in uh, a major part of everybody's most mission-critical data center environments. Um, but I would still say hardware is a very entrenched business, um, so we're pretty early in the in the cycle. Um, but to the extent that people start voting with their wallets and actually um, promoting openness in the hardware space, I think we can accelerate the trend. What is your long-term vision for open hardware? You know, the, the long term, I think, is really around this convergence of, of voices for the unique needs of scale computing. Um, because I really do believe that the, the hardware industry today provides reasonably good um, mainstream IT products for mm -hmm. people that are deploying their own um, environments. But I think this trend towards scale computing is an inevitable trend. Um, there's going to be a larger number, uh, a smaller number, I'm sorry, of larger data centers out there in the future. And I think designing infrastructure for the specific needs of people that are deploying at scale um, is going to look a lot different than it looks today, right? Like we talk about, for example, the concept of warehouse scale computing, but nobody really treats their data centers like a warehouse, mm -hmm. right? Like it's always fascinated me why. You know, why do we build like these platinum coated facilities and then we fill them up with cheap commodities? Right. Um, and so I think that there's just a whole sea change of, of technology and, and the approach to the development of the technology that's going to lead us somewhere that I don't think anybody can really predict. Um, but I'll go back to that railroad analogy again that I mm -hmm. talked about. Like, I don't think anybody could have predicted how many miles of track would be laid once a common standard was put sure. in place, right? right? They went from like 52,000 miles to like 90,000 miles of track. Um, the cost of transporting equipment across the country went from like 70 cents per ton mile to two cents per ton mile. And I think if we apply those same yeah. kind of principles in the, in the hardware space, nobody can really envision what might become, right? Because I think when open source Linux broke the proprietary lock-in of proprietary risk from Unix, mm -hmm. I think that celebration was premature, right? I think we celebrated because now we could deploy Linux on x86, but we deployed an open source Linux on a proprietary closed x86 mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And what might the industry look like if that proprietary x86 changes? 
right? right? So applying those open source software principles, the rest of the way down the stack is going to bring us somewhere where I don't think anybody can predict. Right, it feels like it's a very interesting space to be moving into though, right? It really is, yeah. yeah. So last question for you, you mentioned the open compute's about a year old at this point. What are some of the big lessons that you've learned in that first year? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest lessons that we've learned is that getting people involved um, in something that has traditionally been very closed is, is a big challenge, right? Because um, on the consumer side, it was really easy, I would say, because there was a lot of pent-up passion already in the community. Mm -hmm. People that were like, why can't I get what I want from the market? Why won't they let me modify this one little bit of hardware? It seems easy to me. So the consumer side was really easy. The supplier side, there's been a lot of really fun discussions, and I would say there's also been a lot of really challenging discussions, like why are you stealing my cheese kind of discussions, right? right. Like, I've always done it this way, and, and I bend the metal this certain way, or I design this AC to DC power supply a certain way, and that is what differentiates my business. Mm -hmm. um, I think a year, two, five years from now, those discussions, I think hopefully those people look back and go, wow, that was really short-sighted and that was really silly to push back on like how I design my power supply. Right, right, right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking yeah. the time. Thank you.